Welcome, everybody. So today uh, we're going to be talking about we've been waiting for this day. <laughs> <laughs> right, Susan? Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about eyes. So a big lead up, skin, prepping the skin, a facial, getting our kind of getting our feet, uh, uh, my our toes wet, uh, actually on this uh, in this format of doing live events. Ladies, I, I want to welcome all of you and thank you for coming. Let's get started. Susan has prepped her skin. She's uh, put on a, a moisturizer. Calming. Uh, yeah, the calming moisturizer is really great. It's a liquid fluid. It's very, it's very rich, but also very. It removes a lot of redness, and also it feels cooling on the skin. She used tinted primer over that. Light. Uh huh. Light. Yeah, light. And uh, on her lips, she's done her lips in a couple favorites of hers. Uh, uh -huh. All of both of ours. One of her lipstick favorites was is Pisago Puro, which she's used yes. over and over, which we I both we both love. It's mm -hmm. very emollient, very luscious, and then Neapolitan, which is a great lip liner. Starting with the eyes, uh, you already put on Illuminate and Contour Eye on your on the on the lid. So right. a, question a lot of uh, lady. Uh, people ladies have had is how do we smooth out the eye? What do we do? Do we prime it? Do we put something on? And I've found, I've used primers over the years. I've used a lot of different things. Currently, I'm not putting a colored primer, a, but I'm using uh, my eye treatment. And Susan turned me on to this in that she is, uh, when using, when trying this out a couple of years ago, she found that it really took away the crepey texture on the skin. And it really helps with eye makeup, right, Susan? Yes, I found that, especially if I'm putting something like up above the crease here, like if I'm doing some, you know, some contouring, which I guess we're going to get to today, it really helps it go on a lot smoother. Great. And, and it gives it a much smoother look. Yeah. So how long before you do eye makeup would you say you put the the the, the cream on? You want to let it absorb in a little absorb. bit. Absorb. I think five to 10 minutes. Five to 10 minutes. Great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Similar yeah. to the lip treatment. When I put lip treatment on, I always have to put it on before if I'm getting someone ready for the red carpet because I can't put a lip liner on right over the lip treatment. Mm -hmm. The lip liner won't stay. So very similar because you don't want the eye to be wet with the product still you want it to absorb in the kit for today is simplify uh elevate and focus your eyes and brows we'll talk about things as we go so uh let's let's do your let's do your eyes okay can i start with the brows or do you want me to start with the eyes? even great. if i don't wear any other makeup i always fill in my brows this is great so i use your technique i i use the little brush I brush the hairs up is and it just kind of now? fill it in. Yep. And um, some days I'll do like a really defined brow, but some days for, for casual, I just kind of fill, fill it in a, in the direction of the hair. Great. Like that. Perfect. Natural taupe is the color. Yes. Yes. Yep. We've used blonde. Which is a nice, for many it's years. a nice warm color for me. Yep. And then I just go in the direction of the hair. What I love about uh, you, what you've done is exactly what I, you know, I start with the, the, the spoolie, I brush the brows up. Ladies, there's a lot of you that have talked about having sparse brows, they've gone away. Susan does not have excessive brows either. Her brow is fairly, uh, it, it's more pronounced in the beginning, but very common with a lot of us. It's not uncommon. The eye, the brow goes away from the arch and out. So what you're seeing there is a penciled on brow. And, you know, I find that if I put too much brow on, what's really easy is just to take the spoolie on the opposite end of the brush and just brush through it and it removes some of the brow pencil if you feel it's too dark. Now, I tend to do brows last. That's just me, but I understand why you like to, I, I love that you have a technique because if you don't walk out the door, you're not gonna walk out the door without any brows. I yeah. do brows last. And when I've done the face, it's the last thing I put on. So then I can 
put heavier brow or lighter brow based on the makeup I've done, based on whether I'm doing a really intense eye or if it's a really soft day look. So great, that, look, that looks wonderful, I love it. And this is how I would shape your brow. I would just shape it. If you didn't have this shape, I would create this shape. Mm -hmm. I start with that because I feel like that's the one thing that really gives my face some definition is filling in the brows. So like, that's a good starting place for me. Yeah. So that I don't go too overboard on anything else. Yeah. I'm all about eyeliner and I, and, and I know it's not always the case for everybody. And I'm, and I think eyeliner to me is similar to brows to you. Mm -hmm. Don't walk out the door without any eyeliner on one, because I find that it's the one thing that clean, uh, makes, it's, a, it's all about framing. This is what we're doing. We're framing the face. This together, they work in concert, really, uh, right. the brows and the eyeliner. They're very similar. So let's move on from there. Let's do the next. Do you want step. me to do eyeliner next then? No, oh, no, let's do it. Okay. Well, I, I gotta tell you, um, the one shadow in this in mine that I love, and I've been just wearing it on its own every day, is Firefall, and it's it has shimmer. It has it's, shimmer. It's got, it's got a little bit of I don't know if you can see it there, but it has a little bit of shimmer, and I've just been I've just been putting on. It's hard to see it with my yeah I know with my finger. Yeah, I want to show you guys that you can use your finger. You don't have to use the uh, your brush, but if you want to use a brush, uh, you could use a brush very similar to my shadow apply brush. It's a flat uh, natural bristle brush. What's great about this brush is you would pull the eyeshadow across the the uh, the the shadow and what I love about these uh, shadows. Let me put this little talk about the shadows really quick. These are my brand new eye shadows. They're called Silky Smooth Shadow, and the texture on these shadows, ta, moi, they are. <laughs> they're great. They are premium. They yeah, don't it's like drag. And yeah. even the uh, the matte, the smooth operator one that you've been using a lot, which is yeah. kind of a neutral light brown, it's matte. It goes on like butter. It's okay, just so I'm gonna get up here so people can see. Can yeah. you see the lids? Yeah, kind of. Just close your eyes and bring up your chin a little bit. There you go. Perfect. I know it's not easy to see. But this color is kind of a gold. Uh, it's a light. It's like a, a light coppery gold. It's it's like a light rose gold. Like a light rose gold. Yeah, that's exactly fair. right. And it's kind of champagne. What, it's like a champagne. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. Uh, it's brand. It's just brand spanking new. I'm gonna it grab your like an emollient texture to emollientness yeah to it. it's just it's just there's no graininess or grittiness or anything to it at all it's just it's almost like a cream but it's but it's a powder yes and and there have been a couple questions about should i use a cream or a powder on my eye as i mature as we age either or what works for you this is feels like a cream powdery shadow it really does. It's it's luscious. All of yes. these in this new line. So, I what uh, uh, what I found is putting on. There's another color. There's four colors in this new collection. Uh, there's uh, okay. Let me just talk to Sarah. Cream on the top, which is yeah. like a a creamy. Uh, it's light. It's a great base tone. It's shimmery. Then there's a peachy color called Daydream, which mm -hmm. is very neutral on your eye. But what I find, what I love about this color is say you have blue or purpley tones on your lid, or you have discoloration on your lid and your lid or the eye, the full eye just needs some evenness. It's a great color to even out discoloration. 
then we finish with Firefall, which Firefall and Daydream are kind of similar in the sense that they're peachy. And then the final one, which is Smooth Operator, which is a great Wait. color for, yes. Oh, you want me to show you? Go ahead and show us. It's great okay, for hooded eyes. Use. Great for the I have, people ask a lot about hooded eyes and I have um, kind of hooded eyes. So this is really great, like above the crease to kind of reduce that look of that hood. And what I do is I just put a little bit in the brush and then tap it. And I start, I don't know if you can see, I start on the outside corner and just kind of use the brush and pull it up. This is great. So you're kind of putting the tip of the brush into the crease and then right. pulling that shadow up and through the crease. And ladies, look at how I bring my chin up when I'm doing my makeup. And I always tell ladies when they're in my class, whether we're live on Zoom or if we're live here in my studio, bring your chin up. And then what it does is it drops the lid down and it allows me to see more of the curvature because when I bring my, my chin like this, I can't see my eyes. But when I bring my chin up, kind of raise my for my forehead, now I can get in there. And as Susan was saying, uh, and I love that you're using that technique of using the bristles facing downward, which is yeah. great. It's also a great way to do the lid. You can start right above the lashes and work on the lid, but in the crease, you can push it right into the crease and then pull that color up and just softly blend it up. So then, as you can see on Susan's eye, you begin to get a shadow. We can see it perfectly even when you're putting it on, Susan. It's great. Even back. Okay, great. It's great. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, I so now you it. can see it's like I've got the hooded part is a little less it, prominent. It hides it. It, it mm -hmm. cre creates that shadow, which is mm -hmm. exactly what we're after. Okay. Perfect. And then I have a little, I like to, I, I'm about blending. So I have this little blending brush that I would just kind of just blend it a little bit. Yep. Like that. And, and then it looks, it looks great. It's and simple. then the, the one that you mentioned, the cream on the top, I really like this in a couple different places. I use my finger. Let me let's show, them how it, you're, show them how they're, you're using your finger. Bring it up to your face. Okay, I just use my finger. Great. And I put it up here on the brow bone. And it, it's a really nice one to put on the brow bone up here. Perfect. Just a and very it really, light it's like, amount. It's like a little eye lift. <laughs> it is an eye lift. Perfect. It's like one of those three areas that I talk about putting light color what inside yeah. the eye, uh, right under the brow bone and on the outside. So then what I would say after this moment, after you've done what you've just done with putting cream on the top under there is blend your crease again a little bit up okay. over that color because then it softens it away and it's there together. Then they blend together. Perfect, perfect. You see ladies how that worked, how at first you can see things, but the key to eye, doing your eyes is blend, blend, blend. So, because uh, we don't want it to make, look at all like, wow, I've got makeup on. Great. And then I also put a little bit of this, the, the cream on top, just right so, in the corner. So what did you do with your brush with the, uh, the shadow? Oh, this is the... Um, this is the uh, all concealer the crease blend brush, and it's really nice and small and soft. Yep. So I just put it in there, tap it, and I put a little bit just right in the corner here, and it brightens up the corners of my eyes. Great. In kind of like a little V shape. That's great. Yep. And especially, you know, if you've got some circles or. Um, but it really it, is. It's, it, it immediately brightens. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoom isn't doing us a lot of, uh, no. uh, it's not being generous to us. It's hard to make this fabulous, the lighting. But uh, uh, you can see the slight 
shift in it. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're highlighting the inner corner and that eye area where there could be some darkness with because the, the, we have a lot of vascular activity here. A lot mm -hmm. of sluggishness get happens in through here. The illuminate and contour eye is also great to put in there, ladies, because what it does is over time, one, it helps flush out that area. It also helps flush out the darkness under the eyes. It helps smooth the crepiness on our lid. And it also softens the, 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 the wrinkles. I'll just cut, cut to the chase, the, her, the hills and valleys. Plus it protects us from the lighting that we uh, damaging light from uh, our pads or I, all of our electronic devices. So it's great to use and it helps with this. And then the cosmetic over the top will support that. What do we move on to next, Susan? Lina. Lina. So you have Lina. brownstone? Yeah, this is brownstone, and I don't, I, I tend to not use um, black liner or black mascara because I like a softer. I think it's better. But you have um, used. I'm going to stop you there. You, you have, have used, used black on me. I know. I know. I, For photography, it's good. For yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of black eyeliner. And one, and I'll just set this and go uh, because it gives me the most bang for my buck. And I can always soften black eyeliner out, but I do love brown too, so. Yeah, this would be like for every day. So this is, the, you taught me this one and this is the technique I always use now. Like go up under the lashes and I'll start at the outside and just apply it to the, and I'm gonna have to get a little, bring my mirror a little closer, hang on. Okay. So you're doing tight lining. Mm -hmm. Great. So this is a technique, everybody, that you'll find on YouTube. You'll hear everybody talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see the difference? Yep, I can definitely see the difference. So what she's doing, and I'm going to talk about it and do it a little bit on myself as she does it, is, and this is someone had asked a question, how do I handle my eye when uh, I don't want to pull too much and I want to put a, uh, do liner on my eye, don't pull too much on my eye. Even though you have eyeshadow on, notice ladies how I bring, I'm giving you guys all my little tricks, but you won't remember everything. So, but this is what I teach always in my classes. I teach the same thing over and over and over and over and over. So that's great, Susan. I can see the line. You see the, how that makes a difference. But notice, ladies, how I bring my elbow up. My elbow's up. I use my two fingers and I drop it right on the eyeshadow, right on the lid, and I kind of bump out that 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 uh, underside of my uh, of the lid, right where the tight lining is. And then I start with my pencil going back and forth right in between the lashes. It gets a little tickly here, but trust me, you will get used to it. I have a client, I'm from Minnesota and I have a client, actually a, uh, uh, a, a classmate of mine and she's taken my classes years ago and she's a school bus driver and I've told her, <laughs> and this is not good, but uh, she's like, Brian, I can put my makeup on while I'm driving the bus, this is great. <laughs> But what's fun is when I first showed her this technique, the key to this technique, you guys, is pinky finger on the, on the face gently. I rest my hand here. And now look at the pencil. It's coming up from underneath. It's not going into the eye. It's coming up from underneath. The hand comes. But what happens, she told me this, she's like, Brian, I can do it without a mirror. I can do it without, she literally can just put it on because you learn how to do it by touch. You know exactly where you're at. That's what I have to say. This technique is amazing. Yes, it's yes. not easy to learn this technique by watching a YouTube video. But if you have my help and I really send this message home, 
take a one-on-one -on -one class with me because these techniques, I can help you figure that out because it's not easy to watch us do this. I'm like, you know, it just isn't. One and done doesn't work with this technique, but once you have my guidance or even Susan's guidance, you will figure it out. I know you're not driving the bus putting you on your makeup. <laughs> That's some serious ninja makeup fashion. I know. I, know. I loved it. I was like, this is, I love it. This is so great. So then, okay. and I, and I know I, we talked about this. This isn't something I would normally do every day, but for you, I'm going to do it. Um, great. Okay. Is to put a little bit on the top of the lashes, just so, on the out, outside corner and not perfect. a lot. And then yep. I take the little spongy thing and just kind of blend it across. And I'm sorry if you can't see this, but just kind of blend it across. Oh, that's great. The eye just, the eye just shows up. I can All only see a tiny little piece of me, so I don't know what you guys are able to see. No, it's really perfect. It's, it's excellent. So what I say about eye makeup is this too, and I always have to remind myself, I'm not kidding. When I'm doing working with someone and we're doing makeup and uh, once we finish with eyeliner, the eye makeup comes together. It completes everything. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this isn't working. And then I get to the end and I put eyeliner on and the whole thing just fits. Yeah, it, right it really, it, it, it definitely is the thing that just makes it all pop. It makes it all pop. It yeah. really does. It's yeah. like my mom, my mom, 76 years old and she doesn't wear eyeliner much. And when I go in with the pencil to do her eyeliner, I really have to like hold her down like with a straight jacket because <laughs> I'm like, mom, when we have a family photo and her photos, when I've done her makeup and when we have eyeliner on her and the photos that she has no eyeliner on, I'm like, mom, get rid of those photos. You need that and <laughs> wear that eyeliner just, and it's this technique coming from underneath you guys this is the key because if you don't put any on the top because like susan said she doesn't really usually put any on the top but you can come from underneath and then just a little bit on the top right above the area where you put some just about a quarter of the way over flip the brush use this before it dries down because this dries down to waterproof it holds mm -hmm. it won't it won't smudge yeah uh, I, I'm not going to say 100% it won't be because there's certain things that'll cause anything to smudge, but then just softly blend it over. And it just gives it that nice, soft, smoldery, smoky, soft, smoky. And it's a great, really great beginning to doing a more evening eye if one, if one was going to go out. And ladies, I know I, I'm going to be frank. I know we're not under 40 here. And we're not under 50, a lot of us, and we're all pushing something. My, uh, my neighbor upstairs just turned 98 yesterday. I just say that because it's amazing. But uh, you can wear more shadow on your eyes. You can do more makeup on your lid. You can do this. Uh, Judy Dench does it. You can too. Helen Mirren does it, you can too. And I use them as examples because those are ladies that are very fair. Their skin is light. But with the right technique and the right amount, it can be done. So you can be red carpet ready and, too. And, I, and Judy Dench, I mean, I've seen her look gorgeous with, you know, people say don't wear shimmer. I've seen her wear shimmery eye makeup that just is stunning on her. Yes, it's yeah. And a lot of times it's just on the lid. Yeah, just on the lid, not yeah. in the crease, not above the crease, just yeah. on the lid. And that's uh, what that's what I say. You don't you know, people are like, oh, you know, it's it, if you wore it in the 80s, don't wear it now. But I said in the 80s, we wore it the whole eye. Right. And I just do, you know, just like on the on the lid. It's great. So let me show you guys really quick. So this color, which is the uh, daydream. I pull the shadow across, I tap it off, see how some drops off. And what I tend to do is I drop, tap it off in back into the product. I pull a little more up. Now I put it on, I, what I like to do is press it on, but watch what it does to my eye. See? 
see how it brightens and how I can use that brush. Look at that, how it just brightens that eye. Now, watch this. I use smooth operator, the darker one, on the tip of the brush and pull it right here in the crease a little bit and right above the lid. It's almost like a little contour. That's a little contour. It kind of gives you that little, look how it frames that eye. Hmm. Now, you can use either cream on the top or firefall. Take a little bit of it and dab it right over that matte color. And I always say dab a little bit right in, right there, right at the high point of the lid. Then if I put eyeliner on, I'll put an eyeliner on for you guys. I, I'm having a hard time seeing too, but I'm gonna do my best. I know. I do love makeup. I don't wear makeup, you guys, I'll be honest. I put a little bit of foundation because I was a little red being on this, but I don't, but in my classes I do. Uh, I, and it, it is, it's absolutely, I can't tell you, it's so much fun to me. And it's so much fun for me to teach you. I can't say that enough because I yeah, see you light, I see lights go on and it's, it, it lights me up in a way that I would have never knew that I would have loved doing what I doing this, but I do, I love it. So you can see the difference. Mm -hmm. Daydream, smooth operator, firefall and brunette liner. And that same pencil, that same brow pencil uh, Brian, somebody asked about liner on the bottom too. Okay, what, great your... question. Great question. Uh, Susan, grab that brush that you were using for the cream on the top, the crease brush, that tight, okay. small crease brush. Dab a little bit of that into smooth operator on the tip of the brush. Okay. You could also do it on your, your other brush, but I like it on that brush. Now tap it off, make sure you have uh -huh. tapped it off and you're gonna take that brush and you're just gonna go right on into the right, kind of pull your finger down, look at here for a second, Susan, kind of open this up and then you're gonna just take that smooth operator right along the lower lash line. Or you can even take the remaining brow, brow eyeliner that's remaining in the brush, uh, the smudger and just, work it in there that'll okay. just give it a little more framing yes it's okay it's great yes to underlining uh, putting liner on the lower lash line it keeps it fresher if you don't but if you feel naked put a little there you can use an eyeshadow just like she's using that brush how are we doing on time oh, 12 35 we're doing great let me look at some of the questions. I I, I'll, I see there's a couple questions. Uh, la 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 la. Um, so I'm gonna need glasses. This is when I need glasses. Will the product's name be posted later? Yes. Um, I find I really need brows for Zoom class <clears throat> in regular life for sure. For the grocery store, etc. I can get get away with doing them. Yes, brows for, for sure, brows and eyeliner. I'm just gonna kind of go down through some of these. There's actually an eyebrow filter in Zoom, which is hysterical, I love it. Thanks, Christine, great, great. I know there's these fun little uh, 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 filters, that's great. Uh, I, ha I have to have brows for everyday regular life, love that. Even though most of it's, my time is spent in my home office, isn't that so the case? Um, uh, me too. I never had a, had a, had any color to, to them brows. So these pencils are great. Uh, 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 Natural taupe is a perfect brow pencil for, I would say, ninety five percent of you here. If you wanted something a slightly darker, brunette is another color. Uh, let's see. 
uh, I'm only, let's see, is there a question? Apply liner to the top and bottom? Don't have to, but you can, like we just, any tips for those of us wearing glasses? Really quickly, Susan, wearing glasses. What do you have to do when you're wearing glasses with eye makeup? Heavier eye shadow, ladies. You can handle more with your la Now, her la glasses are, um, they have progressive lenses, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they go so a little darker. So they do, they do tend to cast some shadows. So yeah. I, I tend to really want to make sure I, I put some primer right in here to kind of counteract some of those shadows a bit. Yes, yeah, so the eye, the primer, let's try, let's do that. Let's do that. What would you do next with your eyes or do you want me to direct you? I would do mascara, but um, okay, I did do put a little primer in there, but I can do a little more if you want me to demonstrate. Do a little bit. So you can use primer, foundation, concealer. I use, because she used primer as her foundation, she's going to use the t light primer and she's going to use either, yeah, yep, yeah, that, that's perfect. And she's going to clean it up right inside there and it'll just kind of clean up those eyes and it'll just make everything pop because this area gets a little dark. One of the reasons why I always do make my foundation last is because things get messy when you're doing eyes, even if you're using a little. So I'll clean up this eye area. Yeah, perfect. And then put in that product right in. Lift up a little bit, Susan. Bring your chin up a little bit as you do that. I know you can't see. <laughs> Perfect. Great. So I'll show you guys on myself how this works. Just look up my nose. <laughs> yeah, right. So <laughs> tinted primer, my lighting is heavy. Uh, so I take a little bit right here on my, uh, see that little drop, just like she did. D take my foundation brush and Put it right in underneath there so you can see it. It's, it's, it's there. Clean off my brush with a tissue. And then very lightly, my hand is very light on my brush. I just kind of tap it in. Notice I'm not brushing. I'm just tapping. I can even just kind of grab. When I use my fingers like this, it makes things a little more dainty. It, it, it tells me to keep my hands lighter and then just kind of soften it right in, right up to the lashes, but don't go into the lashes because then it's gonna get all con con congoagulated into the lash line. And look at how that just gives a nice brightness, perfect. I see that on you too, Susan. So that's mm -hmm. perfect when you're wearing glasses and also, because you wanna make sure this is brightened. Let's go ahead and curl, what do you, what do you say about curling? Well, I already curled my lashes because that's the other thing. That and brows are the two things that I do every day, even if I'm not wearing any other makeup, because it's another thing that's like an eye lift. I mean, it just makes me look more awake and um, it just, it lifts the eyes. It's really amazing. So the lash curler, go ahead. So you, you've already done it. I've already done it. So let me talk to you guys a little bit about how I lash curl. So I take the lash curler and I kind of, I'm almost like I'm landing the lash curler. Chin up and then I kind of come here. See how I'm coming down into it? I land the lashes in and then I bring the bottom down. And then I, as I curl, I hold it for, depending on how intensively you know, if they're not straight, as close as I can to the skin, hold it as long as I can, then I bump it out a little bit and bump it out. So like maybe three times, so I get a nice curl. And this is I, a game I wanna, changer. I wanna say something too, Brian, for people that are like kind of newbies at curling their lashes or find it really challenging, the curler you have with the spring, I find is one of the, the easiest to use. And the other thing I do is I, I'll just for like two, three seconds with a blow dryer, just warm it up a little bit. And I find that the curl will hold, it'll curl easier and hold longer. It's great. So it's like a little curling iron. So you yeah. just heat it. Be careful. Don't heat it too much, but just No, a no, bit. just, just, 
get just, get it so it's not cold. Get it so it's like skin skin temperature. It's great. It's and really then it, great. it's but that that little lash curler if for somebody that struggles with it, that's a really good one because I find that one really easy to use. Yep, it's easy. And, and I've tried nice. a bunch of them. So go ahead and do your mascara. 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 And you gave me some um, navy, which I'm going to use. This is great. So we, she and I, uh, Susan and I were talking about, she wanted to use navy months ago in the middle of pandemic. She's like, what do we do with eyes? And so we're like, okay, how about navy? Navy eyeliner, uh, uh, mascara. So this is great. It's a great color. Also against the, the eye shadows that we use, the peachy tone shadows, uh, neutral tones. The blue works great against, oh, that makes, wow, love that. See how that opens that outside of that eye. Yeah. Um, what I love what you about, told me about, about the way that, where you, how you apply the mascara can like affect the shape of your eye too. Totally, I'm all about, I learned from Mariah Carey, you guys, one of the things, she grabbed that mascara out of my hand and she said, this is how you do my mascara. And really when we're doing mascara and lips sometimes on a celebrity, we're like, here, you do it, you do it. Uh, it, it. They do a lot of times, they do their own lips. We'll get it going. Uh, but she was really helped me hone in my skill on, uh, on putting mascara on. Uh, clean, one of the things to do also, this is a great length, this is called Max Defining Lash Mascara. It's curling, lengthening, conditioning, and it's long lasting. It has, it, it, it's, it, because of the brush, the brush has a curve to it. The the curve, the con uh, convex, con concave, convex. I like to use the convex, this portion really close to the lashes. And uh, so that'll help get the product really close in. Then at the very end, I turn it so that the concave portion curls the ends. Then you can also get this into the corners. I flip my hand and get it into the corners here. And when I do this eye, I flip my hand, flip the arm and put do it the same way. Corner, tip it. Now, one of the things Mariah taught me, which is love it, is she likes her eyes to come up in the middle like this, not out like that. Not that we don't like the outsides to go out, but coming up right in the middle. So she was really key on making sure that I pulled this up. She loved her eyes kind of having a roundness and that really helped. The way you put your lash mascara on changes everything. And there's other tips I have about how to make your mascara last longer, what to do when you first open the mascara a case. I'm not going to get into everything not right now, but there's a lot of tips about mascara that I, a lot of tips about everything that I haven't said. Uh, where are we at? I think what I'm done. Done. So do we put mascara on the bottom lashes ever? I don't because I just don't. I, I, okay. I find it, it, you know, even, even the best mascara winds up you know, flaking off on the bottom. I, would I put mascara on you if we were doing a photo shoot? Yeah. On your bottom lashes? Yeah, you would. I would. You, okay, so I'll do it. No, 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 no. I don't brush. want you, you don't have to do it. But Talk I want you guys brush. to see this is a real fun brush. And you can, when you That's use for this. for clumping. Yeah, it's great for clumping. It cleans up, it cleans out that mascara. It finishes it. It's called mascara apply. It takes out that mascara. You can also uh, put on mascara on the, on the brush and then just tip it onto the lashes. And it's great for adding mascara on the bottom lashes. You don't have to do it. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to talk about that if to cover that. One last, okay. So we're kind of coming to the end. Uh, what's it, 1246, we're there. And I know we'll start losing people and I don't want to lose you guys because I know we all have lives in this very, very busy world. <laughs> so I, this is a pencil call, it's called, um, uh, it's a waterline brightener. And it's used to be used in the 
60s, 70s, 80s. If you feel like your eyes are closed in, you can put it down here on the lower lap. Have you, do you ever do this, Susan? Um, I tried it. I find, you know, when I first used to do this back in the 80s, I would do it right on the water line, but I find that it doesn't stick on the water line anymore. So now I do it between my lashes. This is the tip to making things stick on your water line, whether it's the above water line or the low water line. Take a Q-tip, clean it off, Make sure you have all of the lubricant there gone, and now you have a dry skin surface. Yeah. And things will stay longer, and things won't bleed. They won't no. go away. So if you have problems with things running, like mass liners that do that, do that. But this is a great way to brighten this pinky color here. If you want to put it on, Susan, that's fine. But what I want you guys to know is, I, I'm going to tell you, I do have a, a we're kind of coming to the end. And let me see if there's any other questions here. Uh, I've done the white liner for theater. Yes. And this isn't really a theatrical thing. This, the, this one, this is just to brighten, just to remove any darkness. And it's kind of, it's goldy. It's champagne color. It's not white. It's, it's more neutral and it's really great just to brighten up if you're pink there. And it also opens the eye if you feel like you have small closed eyes. It's perfect for that. Uh, uh, so this is a product that I have about 10 of these pieces left on the shelf. I may, may decide to continue to carry it, but I'm, I have an offer today and I want to tell you guys the offer and I will send out an, uh, I will send out an email to all of you uh, shortly so that uh, you'll have everything, all of the products that we use today. Cause I know there was quite a few things we've gone through, but today um, I have two kits online. There's the kit that has everything that we use today. It has the four shadows, it has the eyeliner, and you get to choose. Online, you can choose. You can choose your, your eyeliner color, black or brown. You can choose what um, mascara you want. You can either have black, navy, or brown black. I have those options in this Max Defining Mascara. Uh, we're promoting and talking about blue these days, which is fun because why not? And I actually like the blue a lot. And you have a choice of that. And then um, it'll come with a brow pencil. That complete kit, uh, I'm going to, the first nine or 10 people that choose to purchase that, I'm going to throw this in as a gift, this waterline eyeliner. Uh, and if I run out of those, uh, uh, we can chit chat and I'll uh, throw in a, a concealer because we talked about concealer, but we're not going to get into it today, but it does similar what the tinted primer does on the eye. Um, so that's a little uh, tip. There's a code, a, a complimentary code and a, a, a code to use online. I'll write it in the chat. It's eyes 15. Uh, that's the, the specialty code. The code is good through Wednesday of next week. Uh, it'll be good towards all of the kits that we've done, that everything we've done today individually, or if you choose, you want to do a, a, a set that we've, that we I sent out to Susan, you can do the set also. I just sent that to everybody. So, um, uh, let me do one thing. If, uh, do we want to do any Q and A, or should we close it? Do, do you think that should we open it up for a few minutes? Yeah, if people want to stick around for it, then they yeah, can we'll it. stick around till one o'clock. If you guys want to uh, stick around, if anyone has any questions, feel free to. On the bottom, there is a raised hand option under reactions. I'm going to make everybody viewable on my screen so I can see you. If you want to put up your hand on the bottom, there's a place where you can raise your hand. If you look in my window, you can see I just raised my hand and Felice just raised her hand. So I'm going to go to Felice first and I'm going to ask you to unmute Felice and go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Felice. How are you? 
Brian. I'm wonderful. Thank you. I'm driving. Uh, actually, <laughs> I'm waiting to get gas right now. But I wondered, is the water line the white part inside, inside under the skin? That's what you call the water line? Great question. Yeah. The water line is the space between the, the lashes and the eyeball. Yes, that skin. Okay. Yep. Yep. So Perfect. it's that fine, like, ridge or yeah it's kind of what closes when our eyes close Got what it. touches perfect thank you did you receive everything i know you've uh, you've 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 got a few things yeah, I went crazy and I love yeah. I love all the products. I'm just I'm still trying to figure out the sequence. I thought okay. we could have a private conversation about that. We can definitely do a private conversation. I I'm, I'm, want you all to know that uh, I uh, you know I'm offer also you can send me an email and if you want to have a five or ten minute Zoom with me, I'm happy to do a Zoom with any of you to help you with any questions. I, I'm I'm here. I, I, this is what I do and I I'm I'm I, it's a pleasure to do that uh thank you felice great to see go ahead you have another i one quick question are you open for people to come to you now or not yet i i am i haven't really advertised it yet uh i've been i'm in i'm one i have one shot i have i do get my final uh vaccine next week uh but i'm i'm a i feel safe in my space uh so yes, I am seeing people and I'll slowly roll that information out more. So yes. All right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Andrea, you have a question for us. Go ahead. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Ryan and everyone. Um, I wanted to know what's the shelf life of powder shadows and blushes. I haven't really used eye makeup very much in recent years because of allergies and such. And I'm kind of dipping my toe back into it. I have a feeling I'm going to have to probably toss all of my old shadows. Uh, I'm gonna say yes to tossing everything, mainly because, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's good to start fresh and, you know, they, uh, they can be carriers of bacteria. D powders are easier. Now, this, my eyeshadows in this kit, I can hardly read what we've put on there. 24 months for the powder shadows and powder blush. Powder blush, you know, both of them. Know that if you're using a brush, it's going to keep it more sanitary. So Susan and I did today, and I wanted to help you guys know that, hey, you don't have to use a brush. I'm big on brushes, but you can put your eyes shadow and because this is such a smooth formula it goes on really well with your finger but one of the challenges with using your finger is if you you can transfer product oils easier to the product so if it if you're using the eyeshadow that is a matte eyeshadow you'll see a buildup of oil more on a matte on the shimmery eyeshadow, you don't see it. So that's just a little heads up. Now, uh, so I'm a fan, I, I'm, you know, toss it and start over. You know, it's, it's an easier approach. Any other questions anyone would like to, uh, I'm uh, open. Yeah, go ahead, Valerie. Uh, thank you. So I have no makeup on right now, um, but I have very strong glasses in terms of them being an architectural element on my face. Mm, love it. So, so what does that mean for brows for me? So for brows for you, do you have any brow pencil or anything on right now? No, I'm nothing on. Yeah. So I would say one thing, do what Susan does. You use more. Uh, uh, I, I can see your face quite well. Your brows are non, I, I like to use the word non-existent. I, I don't know why I said <laughs> these words I've, I've used over and over and I'll say it straight to my, you have non-existent brows. <laughs> Let's just put something on. So go ahead, Susan. Yes, yeah, Susan. Exactly. No, I have non-existent brows non at least. My brow is kind of mellow too. I will use a pencil. 
Um, my mom's brows are, I'm like, mom, you got to use a pencil just a little bit because it frames everything. So yes, the architectural frame is good, but a, a brow pencil brow will help just give shape to the face. It's like a, like I like to used to say, a, a, a painting without a frame is just a painting. The Mona Lisa needed a frame and that helps a lot. It'll frame, it'll even add to your, it'll add to your glasses, having your brows uh, mm -hmm. done. So and I, it would not be, the color would not be this dark though. I would go lighter no, than- No, no, use the color that she used, natural taupe, it's perfect. Uh, and, and you can, you don't have to use that. You can go lighter even just a light. So look at how, let me see if I have it here. I thought I put it here. And what you can do is, is comb it through too with the yeah. spoolie so that it looks, it, you get a very natural, you can get a very natural look. So look at this, watch this. I can put brow on. I, I grabbed a different color, but I can put it my amount how I can put on, I can go heavier and heavier and heavier. But then if I feel I got too much, I just keep, I pull this through. Now, watch the lighter touch. Just okay. like that, just okay. a light, it's a lighter touch. Um, so you can see. Okay. So that's a brown. That's mm -hmm. very light, light brown. Let me show you the brown. This is br this is brunette. Oh, okay. More red. This color is actually called blondie. My okay. natural taupe is running around the house. This is more cool. <laughs> Natural taupe is in between, is a little more warm. Uh, blonde, we used to use Blondie a lot, Susan and I, and then I brought on natural taupe. And natural taupe is just a little warmer. It's not quite so. But I'll say this, Blondie and new, natural taupe work very well, both on blondes. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you have, if you chose to go natural with your color, and I'll just say it, white or gray, Blondie will work well with that, really well, and natural taupe. You know, you can kind of go back and forth between the two. Okay. Does that help? Thank, thank you. You're very welcome. Let's see if we have any other, uh, I'm gonna look down in the chat. Or let me change my screen back to gallery. I had, uh, let's see, any uh, hands raised. Um, I learned a lot today, Th a wonderful. Karen, thank you. Uh, uh, Valerie, yeah, we chatted. Perfect. Anyone else? Any uh, anyone want to? Any other questions? Twelve fifty nine. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You know, uh, I can always be. I can talk a lot, and I can be long winded. My one friend. <laughs> He says, you don't have a lot of brevity. And I looked it up. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but <laughs> um, but I'm, what's really fun about the Zoom and this format is it really, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. It really hones in on what we're doing. And it really focuses me, focuses us, to, and I can really, I love this, uh, it, who would, I love the touch and the, the, the realness. There's nothing like it, but this does work. It really does. Any parting uh, uh, thoughts? Uh, thanks, Brian. You're for very all welcome, your Susan. Wisdom, and thanks for sharing this with us. It's fun. It's a blast. You and got thanks it. everybody Thank you so for much. coming. It's been In like a two party. Weeks, I think in two weeks we'll be doing another one and we're going to be doing lips and cheeks. And uh, I have another one in the wings, the five minute uh, a face. I talked about it, Susan. I dropped that on Susan. And we <laughs> made you something about how to clean brushes, what, how to clean your tools. So there's an endless supply. And we may even do something where we just have a Q&A, a 30 minute 
open q and a i can have makeup here we can show you things but stay tuned i'll send you all out a uh, an email uh, you'll get uh, all the details about what uh, what we did today and uh, thank you again for for tuning in it's, Thanks, it's, it's such a blast thank you susan have a good so weekend. Much. happy easter happy easter you guys bye have a great weekend